Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net. And today we're gonna to take a look at Maxon Cinema 4D. And we're gonna be creating some 3D text. And wait a second. This seems a bit familiar. I don't know why. Okay. The truth is I was a little reluctant to tackle Cinema 4D. I'd used it before and it was very awkward for me coming from a 3D Studio Max background and the interface and the transforms, so everything was just backwards. And it just wasn't happening for me until I got a call from Maxon offering me a bunch of money to do Maxon Cinema 4D tutorials. And guess what? I love it now. It's, it's fantastic. I don't have a problem. At, no, I'm kidding. The truth is I, uh, I actually got into the keyboard shortcuts and was able to change it so that it's very similar to 3D Studio Max. And in fact, um, you know, I feel like I can do anything. Well, not anything, but we can do this 3D text and that's for sure. What I'm going to do is go ahead and render this out. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to be creating some 3D text, very similar to the 3D Studio Max tutorial. Now, I do want to make one thing clear. No matter what software I use for the tutorial, most everything I will teach should translate to other software. So if you have Maya, or if you have Soft Image, or if you have Lightwave, you should be able to follow along with these tutorials with maybe a few differences here and there. So you're going to want to kind of pay attention more to the techniques such as the seamless backdrop and, you know, the double bevel on the text. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this and uh, basically same deal we have our ramp for the background and our 3d text so I'm gonna go ahead and start a new project and I'm gonna go to the create palette and click on a plane and in cinema 40 automatically creates it and what we'll do is we'll change the size to a thousand by a thousand and We'll increase the segments to 60. And then we'll go to our modifiers and we'll select bend. Now it does work a little different in Cinema 4D. We have our objects here. And what I'm going to do is grab the bend object and drop it into the plane. So see the arrow is pointed towards the plane and now it's pointed down. Well, we want to point it down. And that way it's in the plane or it's affecting the plane. And then we can go select bend and we can play around with the uh, settings here. Now, we'll change the strength to 90 degrees. So you can see that's the bending strength. Now, I will go to the coordinates and bring this over. Now, I want to go ahead and rotate this so that we get that look. So I'm going to do negative 90 degrees. And if we look at another view here, I think you can middle click and that will uh, bring the view up. I've changed all the shortcuts to my max shortcuts, which is Alt W. But as you can see, we've created a 90 degree bend and uh, that's looking pretty good. I didn't get a chance to use the watermelon joke, but uh, you know, another time. Now let's go on to the text. So we'll go to the shape create palette and I'll click on text and that's going to create some text here and we'll go ahead and take the rotate tool and we'll rotate it so that it's facing the camera. You can hold down shift and it'll snap every five degrees. Usually text should be facing the camera for readability and then we'll take the move tool and I'll uh, move it forward. So there's our text on our background. Now Let's add the 3D aspect to the text. Again, slightly different, but pretty similar. We're gonna go and click on the extrude NURBS. I don't know what this is. This is like a, uh, let's see. I don't know, modifier for shapes, perhaps. And I'll click on the extrude NURBS. Now it works a little different. What we're gonna do is drop the text below the extrude and then we'll get the text to extrude out and then we select the extrude NURBS uh, modifier and we'll go to the object setup and we'll set it to zero and we'll increase the movement so that it comes out forward so you want this value to be you know 45 and this one to be zero and zero 
So there we have some cool 3D text and then we can go to the cap option and change the end cap to fillet cap. And look at that, nice uh, cool 3D text. And then we're gonna duplicate this or copy paste it. We'll select the extrude NURBS modifier and choose edit, copy and edit, paste. And now there's two and we can just move one of them back a little. And then we can change the start cap to fillet cap and the end to none. And then we can increase the radius or actually the end to cap. See, I don't know what I'm doing here. And so as you can see, we've created that text and we can you know, change the radius as needed. But it looks pretty good. Um, let's go back to the side view here. And uh, then if we right click, you can choose rectangle selection and select objects and then take the move tool and uh, we'll just move it down let's see our plane is the white one so we'll just move it just about there and there we go and then I'm gonna go ahead and just scale our plane up so we'll just uh, increase the width and the height of the plane so that when we move our camera in we don't see it. And actually I'll just move it over to fill in the space. So here's our text and we'll do a quick preview and uh, it's looking not too great but let's go ahead and add some materials. So to do that we'll just double click in the blank area or just file new material and we can edit it here but I actually like to double click it because in 3D Max it's kind of a floating palette and uh, that's the way I like it. So what we'll do is we'll add a reflection map. So we'll check that. And then if we click on this button, we can pick a material. So if you have a cloud or some sort of environment map, you can use that with this HDR image. I'll choose open. And this map is actually HDR, but it doesn't really matter. You can change the brightness, which is sort of the reflectivity and then we have the mix amount for the HDR so if we bring that down we can sort of control that a little bit better and the specular looks pretty good that's sort of the uh, you know the highlight and you can just affect that then there's all these other ones that you can affect but that looks pretty good and then we'll take this material and apply it to the front text Then we can double click in the materials create a new material and we'll just make it dark gray like before and apply that to the back. Or we can, I think we can apply it right here. Eh, maybe not. I was feeling lucky. Okay, so now we have our text and let's render that out. All right, we are getting somewhere and we're getting somewhere fast. Okay, now the next thing we'll do is add a light into the scene. So I'm gonna create lights and cameras and we'll just choose a light, which is sort of like an omni light. And it's right in the middle of the scene. And what I'll do is just move it up and move it in front of the text and so you can see in relationship to it where it is this is the top view and it's just right in front of the text up in the air so now we have our light and there's no shadows on for that light and we're gonna go into the render settings and we're gonna turn on ambient occlusion so I'm gonna click on apply to scene and we'll click render Okay, so there's our fancy 3D text, and uh, you can, of course, play with the materials to kind of get what you're after. But anyway, um, I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Um, I gotta say, I don't mind Cinema 4D. Once I got past the uh, quirks of the interface and the, uh, you know, the controls, um, you know, I felt, I felt right at home, you know, with my, my other experience. So anyway, remember, use whatever 3D program you want and uh, you know have at it. Now of course in the future I'll take you guys into After Effects and back into your 3D app and we'll get some real tight integration going but for now I just wanted to introduce you to a little 3D so anyway my name's Andrew Kramer and uh, thanks for watching and of course go check out the blog uh, we, uh, we keep that thing up to date pretty well a lot of good helpful tips there that don't always make it into the tutorials and of course, check out our great products because they will change your life. And I'm not kidding around. Anyway, we'll see you next time.